Welcome to St. James King Street for this service of choral evensong, where we remember John Coleridge Patterson, bishop and martyr. Born in London in 1827, John Coleridge Patterson was influenced by the Oxford movement and showed an outstanding flair for languages and in 1861 was consecrated as the first bishop of Melanesia. Patterson was a new style of bishop, a missionary, at the forefront of the church's work, boldly leading into new areas rather than ministering to a settled diocese. He was convinced that the Melanesians could accept and practice Christianity through their own language and culture. On the 20th of September 1871, Patterson was murdered on the island of Nukupu, likely because unscrupulous labour traders had used Patterson's name to lure people on to their ships. What is most remembered is Patterson's attitude that his life was taken by those for whom he would gladly have given it. In the day of my distress, I will call, O Lord, and surely you will answer me. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and weaknesses, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most worthy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them which are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto man in Christ Jesu our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance 
and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
prophet Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. Here ends the first lesson.
A reading from the Gospel of Mark. And then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Here ends the second lesson.
the southern isles and seas. We remember with thanksgiving your servant John Patterson, whose life was taken by those for whom he would freely have given it. Grant us the same courage in extending your gospel and readiness to share our life with others. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God from 
from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ,
Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favor to behold our most gracious sovereign Lord, King Charles, and so replenish him with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that he may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue him plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant him in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen him that he may vanquish and overcome all his enemies. And finally, after this life, he may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Camilla, the Queen Consort, William, Prince of Wales, the Princess of Wales, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and us promise that where two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. When I agreed to preach this evening, I was given the topic of Bishop Patterson and the Martyrs of Melanesia. We know Bishop Patterson well. He was the first Bishop of Melanesia and died in 1871. A memorial to him is on our south wall near the chapel. A tomb-like representation of him lies just inside the doors of Christ Church St. Lawrence. He was a superstar martyr of the 19th century. I did not then realise that the total number of recognised martyrs of Melanesia is 17. One superstar and 16 less well-known. 12 Melanesians, two Norfolk Islanders, and three Europeans. The most recent group was in 2003, and martyrdom has not disappeared. The first Anglican martyrs in Melanesia, who died in 1864, 
were Fisher Young and Edward Nobbs from Norfolk Island, then the headquarters of the Melanesian mission. They were descendants of bounty mutineers. Young was a descendant of Fletcher Christian, and Nobbs, the son of an Anglican priest, George Hun Nobbs, who'd married Sarah Christian, the granddaughter of Christian. He was of the family of our fellow parishioner, Dr. Ray Nobbs. In 1864, Young, Nobbs and Bishop Patterson were on Santa Cruz Island when residents shot at them with arrows. Young and Nobbs contracted tetanus and died. Patterson was not injured on this occasion. John Coleridge Patterson was the elder son of Sir John Patterson, a judge by his second wife, Frances Duke Coleridge, a niece of the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge. He was very well connected in English society. After taking his Oxford degree in October 1849, Patterson was ordained deacon on the 25th of September 1853 and priest on the 24th of September 1854 by Bishop Henry Philpotts of Exeter. A memorial to the bishop's son, George, a royal naval officer who died in 1845 in the First New Zealand War, is on our north wall. On a visit to Exeter in the summer of 1854, George Augustus Selwyn, the first Bishop of New Zealand, recruited Patterson as a missionary to the South Seas. Patterson left England with the Bishop in March 1855, and in 1861 he was consecrated the first Bishop of Melanesia. On the morning of the 20th of September 1871, Patterson, aboard the mission vessel Southern Cross, was off the small island of Nukapu. He had a boat lowered and accompanied by the Reverend Joseph Atkin, a New Zealand priest, Stephen Tarawaniara, who was preparing for ordination, and two other Melanesians rowed towards the reef. Low tide prevented them from crossing, so Patterson transferred to a local canoe and went on alone. Once on the island, he was killed. When the tide had risen sufficiently, the others crossed the reef and when they landed were attacked. Atkin and Tarawainara were speared and later died of tetanus. Patterson made a great impression on the Victorian church. A two-volume biography by his cousin, Charlotte Yong, a noted Victorian novelist and Anglican apologist, quickly spread his fame. On the 28th of November, 1871, a meeting in St. James Schoolroom in Castle Ray Street resolved to set up a memorial for the Melanesian mission. The Christ Church St. Lawrence Monument was the result. Other deaths were Arthur Aco in 1904, James Ivo and the Reverend Charles Godden in 1906, James Silly in 1910, and the Reverend Ben Tilo in 1926. But I move now to the events of 2003 involving the Melanesian Brotherhood, a religious order located in the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu and Papua New Guinea. After a three-year novitiate, brothers take renewable vows of five years. At the end of each period, they are free to return home, find a wife and live a secular life. Between 1998 and 2000, the Solomon Islands were caught up in civil strife that led eventually to the intervention of the Australian and New Zealand governments in 2003. A peace treaty had been signed in October 2000, but Harold Kiki, the leader of the Guadalcanal Liberation Army, did not comply. Sometime early in 2003, Brother Nathaniel Sado went to see Kiki, whom he knew, and called a friend. That trust was misplaced, and he was tortured and beaten to death at about Easter that year. 
Six other brothers set off from Honiara on the 23rd of April to find out what had happened to Nathaniel, following up reports that he'd been murdered by Kiki and his men. They wanted to find out if this was true, the reason for his death, and if he was indeed dead, to bring his body back to Tabalia, the mother house of the Melanesian Brotherhood, for burial. The six brothers did not return. They were Robin Lindsay, assistant head of the Melanesian Brotherhood, Francis Tofi, Alfred Hill, Eni Parabatu, Patterson Gatu, and Tony Sirihi. We should not be surprised that missionaries who often accompanied colonial efforts at annexation and exploitation of indigenous communities were met with violence. In the case of Bishop Patterson, however, it is impossible to assign a specific reason for his death. It was in retaliation for the kidnapping of five Nukapu men by blackbirders only days before his arrival. Blackbirders trafficked in indentured island labour for the Australian sugarcane industry by enticing indigenous peoples into pseudo labour contracts. This was de facto slavery and a dark passage in Australia's history. My great-grandfather, the Reverend Benjamin Danks, was a Wesleyan missionary in the Duke of York Islands, north of Rabaul, at about the same time, and an opponent of blackbirding. He warned local inhabitants not to go aboard any vessel recruiting labour for distant places, much to the displeasure of the labour traders. Blackbirding also lay behind the death of the Reverend Charles Godden, a graduate of Moore College. The chapel there contains a memorial to him. He was murdered on the 16th of October 1906 on Opa in the New Hebrides, now Vanuatu, by a Melanesian, Alamemia, who shot him in the leg and axed him to death. His murderer had been blackbirded to Queensland subsequently imprisoned and deported. He took his revenge by killing Godden. If colonialism and its dark practices lay behind Patterson's and Godden's death, so did its aftermath contribute to the deaths of the seven Melanesian brothers. As the recent, recent history of the Solomons shows, the positioning of Pacific Island nations in the global arena continues to cause conflict both within such nations and between them and larger powers. The Solomon Islands in particular struggles to find a national unity amongst its various local groupings. It struggles to form a stable and productive government sufficiently free from corruption to gain the confidence of its citizens. So what are we to say about this on a day when we celebrate the courage and faithfulness of Bishop Patterson and the martyrs of Melanesia, most of whom have been Melanesians? We need first to acknowledge that courage and faithfulness. Next we need to acknowledge the ambiguity in which we all live out our faith. I make no facile comparison between us and those we celebrate today, but I do point out that we all live between two worlds, that of our faith and that of our times, in the words of Jesus, God and Mammon. We may not be able to serve both equally, but we cannot avoid the interaction. In that sense, our challenge is the same as theirs even if our outcome is quite different. All of us must face the inevitable conflict between our two worlds, and that conflict requires us to observe what Micah urges. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God?
the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.